Are you confused by all the co-pilots that Microsoft's got to offer? Is the license fee for Copilot for Microsoft 365 putting you off trying AI in Microsoft? In this video, we're gonna go through the best of paid Copilot for Microsoft 365 and see if we can do the same things now there's been a new development in the free Copilot from Microsoft. So we've got five different demos to check out to see the comparison, including how to get Copilot for Microsoft 365, the paid version, killer feature for free. So stick around for that one. So just before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones, founder and director at MeTime, where we help people save time at work, increase sales, increase well-being, happening to use Microsoft 365 to do it. If you need help in your organization to get the most out of Microsoft 365, or just to see what's possible or how you might be more productive, then book a call using the link in the description below to see if we're a good fit to work together. So let's get into it. The differences between the free and paid versions of Microsoft Copilot. So broadly, Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365 is the one you have to pay for. That's where Copilot shows up in pretty much every Microsoft app. So we've got it here in Teams, says Copilot for Microsoft 365. If we open a new Chrome window and go to Copilot here, copilot.microsoft.com, this is the free one. So as long as you're signing in with your work account, you'll get this little commercial data protection icon and that's free, but also secure so nothing's going from your organization out into anyone that's going to steal your data or train your other models or anything like that like using a consumer version of AI so it's completely secure still so we should be happy that we can use the free version you can see it says web or work that's because I've still got the Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365 paid license and that's where we can just flip between the two basically paid is gonna interrogate all of the data inside your organization automatically and web is where it can just go you know use ai and search the web so it's same as using chat gpt you can put some prompts in and have a chat with it and get it to do stuff so the new developments that make the free version is it going to be as good as the paid version let's have a look but make it a lot better is the one used to be a limit on how many characters you can type that i don't know if it's infinite but that has got a lot bigger because it used to say how many characters you can use and now it doesn't at all and the other thing is like chat gpt because microsoft copilot and chat gpt are sort of wedded together in development you can now add a file into the free version of Microsoft Copilot and that allows us to do lots of other cool things that we'll have a look at during the rest of this video so the one that is going to be the most difficult for free Copilot to replicate is stuff like within Microsoft's apps not all of them but we'll start with the most difficult and then get to the best way that you can use the free version of Microsoft Copilot so if we start with PowerPoint Copilot for Microsoft 365 the paid one is available in every Microsoft app like we just said in PowerPoint you can create slides for you so that's gonna be pretty difficult for the free version of Copilot to be able to do that one of the things that we tried out in this video the first one we did on Copilot was Microsoft's promises that you can create create a presentation based on another file. So to do that, we click on the Copilot button. Copilot's available in the Microsoft apps if you pay for it. It's not available for free. And you can see it gives you some prompts, which clearly the free version is not gonna do. So create a presentation about, create a presentation from a file, add a slide about. So if we create a presentation from a file, so it doesn't always work as well. So I hope that I'm glad that this happened. AI is still a bit like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it's free, obviously you can put up with, it does sometimes it doesn't work, but if you're paying for it, it does get quite annoying when it doesn't work. So just as I can't find that file right now, I haven't even tried to find the file yet. So let's see if we can get it to work. Yeah, so that is just not working at the time of recording in paid Copilot. Let's try again. Create a presentation for file. Can't find the file. Can't find any file, which is really annoying. We can get it to do some other prompts. So create a presentation about MeTime's latest book. I have written a book on Teams that's coming out soon. Let's see if we can find it. it. There's a file that's in OneDrive that it should be able to find. Maybe it's just gonna make something up, not sure. But, um, but yeah, you should be able to find, tell it exactly what file to use to generate a presentation on. Presentation about me times like this book. So it's created some slides for us, which we can then fill in, which might be useful, but it hasn't actually put anything in about 
the book because I haven't found that file. But you can see the gist of what I was getting at. And if you want to see more of us doing all of the demos of Microsoft Copilot when it came out, watch this video next. But this one's just a comparison between free and paid. So clearly it can create some slides. If it had worked, it would create it from a file, which may or may not be useful. Let's try the free one. So can you create some PowerPoint slides based on this file, please? So if we then go and upload a file, which this one is going to be pretty big. Something else that's not seemed to attach. File is too large. Ah, maximum size is 10 meg. Okay, let's not use the book then. Let's use a just a chapter. Not sure there's a limit on chat GPT plus for uploads because I did upload the book into chat GPT, but that's not this video, that's a different video. So let's just see, can it do some slides based on this file? It might just give us the gist of the slides. Yeah, so it's given us, obviously can't do the actual slides directly in PowerPoint, like you can in paid Copilot in PowerPoint, but it has given us a slide and the content for each one. You could like get it to, oh, please create the PowerPoint file. It's thought that it could generate the PowerPoint file, but it can't actually do that. On now generate the PowerPoint file, it can't actually do that. So that's funny that it thinks that it can do stuff, but it can't actually generate a file. It could generate a picture. It says, can you add some images to the slides? I think it might be able to generate those pictures using DALI 3, but no, it's just writing out again. So clearly if you wanted to do that in PowerPoint, and I'm not sure that's useful anyway to create those slides, because usually they, they just are not very good in my experience, then paid the beats free for PowerPoint. Try it quickly with Excel. So for Copilot in Excel, you can actually get it to do formulas directly in the cells. It's quite slow. It's slower to use Copilot to get you to do a formula rather than me just typing the formula. But I'm quite good at Excel. So if you're not very good at Excel, that might be useful. Again, nothing seems to be working, but this is, you know, my real life. I'm just <laughs> to turn the camera on. Only with files that have autosave turned on. Okay, fine. Let's do something on my audience size, maybe. So here's an Excel sheet with some stuff where I just track what my audience is like over different social media. Yeah, it can create formulas, it can understand, or let's summarize using pivot table or charts. I don't think it's actually gonna understand it because it's not a great format. I wouldn't do a chart based off that format, but let's see. Um, so that's the sort of thing you can do. Oh, you okay. can't find a table or data range. It needs to be in a table. They're now doing a update, so it doesn't need to be a table for the data. But see, it can't actually do anything. You could say like, what's my YouTube? audience couldn't find but if we go and put that same file into free copilot bear in mind that we're logged in with our work account and we've got the shield and the tick so we know it's secure that file's not going anywhere else so we're comfortable that even if it was sensitive data it's not going to leave our tenant it's not going to go anywhere we could then say give me a graph of total audience size over time see if it's actually going to do this so i've not tried this before this is just as we're doing it as we're recording because i don't actually use ai for some of these tasks but i thought it might be useful if you do just to see the comparison of paid versus free as we're waiting for this to load and let's see if it's going to come back with anything tempted to create a graph but i encountered an issue the sheet name sheet one was not found i noticed the relevant data is in the audience sheet i'll try again using the correct sheet okay but you haven't tried again Anyway, I think it's going to be try using audience sheet. Let's just see if it does this. But yeah, you can interrogate any file that you upload. So, oh, it has done it, but then the picture's not loaded. So I don't know if that's uh, actually working or not. What is my YouTube audience size? Let's see if it actually just picks out something from the data. Yeah, well, the YouTube audience size for, as of the latest data, September the 9th, 2024, is 20,716. Thanks for everyone subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, remember to click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time new videos come out because we've got new videos on Microsoft at work coming out every week. Nice little prompt from Copilot. So you can obviously bet, see some things are better interrogated from an upload in the free one. In paid Copilot in Excel, it just said, oh, I can't do it because it's not a table. Whereas if you uploaded that file into free Copilot, it actually returns something, which is pretty cool. I don't know if it would have done that graph if that picture had not broken, but you have a go and let me know in the comments below if it worked for you. But let's get on some things that I use that are definitely useful, free versus paid. So if we come on to Word, so if I open 
the book that's coming out soon. If you want any more, make sure we get on our email list by signing up for some free training, if you haven't already, in the description below, and we'll let you know when the book comes out. But this is a book to go along with our Teams course. And Copilot shows up in Word, like the other paid Copilots do, and the free one doesn't. And you can ask me anything about this document. Now, when free had a limit of how much stuff you could put into this chat box here, having Copilot in Word was really useful because it can then use the entire document, which you couldn't do in paid. Obviously, you can now see where we're going. Now you can upload a file into the free version. It makes the paid version a bit less valuable. So you can like summarize the document. You can ask a question about the document. Let's just do summarize and see what it's gonna do. So I use AI to help me write the book. Also used from the videos I'd already done on the training. Also used AI to write the summary and the outro. And depending on which your preference is, you might find one that's better than the other. But you can see it's done a nice summary for us then, so it, it has worked. But now we've got the upload, and you can see where we're going. If I upload that same, oh, it wouldn't let me upload the book, would it? Wouldn't let me upload the book because it's too big, so this, that page still works there. I did upload the book into ChatGPT, and it let me. So you might need to chop it down under 20 meg, I think it was saying, but it does have some pictures in, so you could just remove the pictures and it might be okay. Let's do, let's see if it lets it, let me upload more than one, no. So say we'd chopped it down to be less than 10 meg, then you can use this. Obviously, if you had something that wasn't, you didn't need to be secure, you weren't bothered about the privacy. So everything I do is on the on YouTube anyway, so everyone can go and find it. So I wasn't particularly bothered about putting the book onto ChatGPT. But if you have got something secure, obviously you don't want to use ChatGPT, you want to use Copilot because it's secure. And you can still do the same summarization. So imagine this was the whole book, but you can summarize that whatever file it is and interrogate it, ask questions about it. So that might be useful for you. You can get it to rewrite things. So again, in Word, you can hover over some text, go on the Copilot icon, make changes, auto rewrite, visualize the table. If we just copied that text into the free version and said, can you rewrite this in the style of, I don't know, Harry Styles? it'll do it. If you wanted to do things from Word, you can pretty much do the same thing in free as you can in paid, just by copy and pasting. It saves you 300 quid a year if that's the thing that you want to use Copilot for. Let's see if, I don't think it lets you upload two files yet, but let's see. So if we try and do the same thing we did in our last video on Copilot, which was comparing to contracts, which was really useful. Let's see if we can do the same thing. So if we start a new chat, see if, where I can remember where I saved those. Ah, here we go. Contract Client X version 1. Let's open that. So docx1. Contract Client X version 2. Oh. Can you compare this document to the next one I'm going to upload? Cool. Sure, I can help with that. Please go ahead and upload the next document. Can you compare V1 above to V2? So it's done, so if you hadn't watched that, that previous video here, it's done exactly what we did. So we did it in Copilot within Teams, the paid Copilot, where it knows everything about your organization. You can select what file you've got straight from your OneDrive or Teams or wherever it's saved, because it's got that context of your organization. Free Copilot doesn't have that context, but now you can upload files into it. We've actually managed to do the same thing for free. So. If that was important to you, here's how you can do that without paying. So something Microsoft probably is not going to tell you that you can do that that explicitly. It's pulled out everything that we changed as well, which is exactly you know accurate. And if you want to see more of everything that we tried, it's check this out, video out next uh, to do with comparing two contracts. So save the best for last. Let's come on to killer feature of paid Copilot. If I come on to this. Discovery call that we had with Neil. If we come on to recap, it's done us an AI summary of that meeting. If we jump into Copilot, we can then get it to generate meeting notes, highlights from meeting chat, if we had any chat, lift different perspectives by topics. It's just some prompts. So you can take those same prompts and put them into free and we'll have a look. But the most useful one was just generate meeting notes gives you the key topics and action items. And you can do that straight from Teams. You have to pay for that. If you didn't want to pay, you can still get the transcript from Teams. Download, download as DocX. And then we're going to stick that same transcript into free Copilot. Dig it, There we go. So we're uploading that transcript. 
we'll use exactly the same prompt, generate meeting notes, gives you the key points discussed and the action items. It's never gonna be exactly the same as the other one because even if you ask AI exactly the same thing with exactly the same data, it gives you something different even in the paid version or any AI. But it's given us the key points discussed, which is accurate, and the next action items, which is accurate. So you can get the pretty much the best of Microsoft's paid Copilot for free using the Copilot in Chrome or Edge, either by copying and pasting, or now you can upload documents as well. There is still lots to come for paid Copilot, so even if some of the features that we've just gone through, you could get for free right now, and I'd encourage you to go and have a go with those if paying for it was an issue for you previously. There's still lots of stuff coming for paid, so Microsoft showed off loads of stuff, I think last early in the year, I'm not sure. They've got another announcement soon, if not already come out by the time you watch this video. And some things they showed is like being able to turn a SharePoint site into a repository of like, here's the information that you need for this subject and make like a, a bespoke chatbot just for that information. They've got some things where Copilot can act more like a colleague. So it's joining your meeting and filling in some meeting notes for you rather than just generating summaries and things afterwards, which I think is gonna be pretty cool. All of that's coming to paid and not in free, which doesn't seem to be a way to replicate all that stuff in free right now. But if you just wanted those basics that has been available in Copilot Paid since it's been out and now we'll be able to get things pretty similar, if not identical in free, then uh, hopefully that helps you out. And it's probably something that Microsoft wanted to keep a secret. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you wanna check out all Microsoft's Copilot and AI, check out this playlist before you leave. Thanks for watching so far. Give the video a like if you remember and we'll see you in the next one.